The last piece of this puzzle is to replace these gross old bushings that are probably stock to the 1972 car. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. Our first order of business is to get these upper and lower control arms removed from the car. Just in case it's too, just in case it doesn't fit, then I'll have to come up with something different. Give me the small one first. Oh yeah. Did that one work? Yeah, that one worked. Told these do not usually come up this easy. Now we want to get rid of all these crusty old bushings to make way for some energy suspension aftermarket polyurethane bushings, part number 3.3126. So let's head over to the workbench and get those new bushings put in. Any ideas? So when you're installing these lower control arms, you need these, these washers. And the reason is because you have these elongated hole underneath the car that allows your eccentric bolt to rotate into and slide back and forth, changing the position of your lower control arm for camber and caster adjustments. The problem is the inner sleeve of the lower control arm bushing will now try to work its way through that hole if it doesn't have a nice surface to push up against. The other problem is that the eccentric bolt that passes through the lower control arm bushing is an eighth of an inch smaller than the lower control arm sleeve inside of the lower control arm bushing. You'd think that energy suspension and all their wisdom might go ahead and take care of this problem by either including these bushings in their product or modifying the product in a way where you don't need them anymore but they didn't. The lower control arm bushing sleeve is still an eighth of an inch too big for the eccentric bolts that go through them and it says for you to use your old ones, but even in a car that's from California and has had no rust to deal with its entire life, only three of my eight lower control arm bushings were in any kind of a shape to be used. I couldn't imagine if you live in the rust belt or somewhere up north where these cars seem to rust away at the slightest hint of winter. Essentially asking the customer to do that is just setting them up for failure. There's not a lot of options when it comes to replacing these lower control arm washers. Your options are essentially to go make one yourself, going buying some washers or using the flange part of the washer and then lathing down a section that your bolt can both slide through and will kind of press fit into the lower control arm bushing. Or you can order some aftermarket version that's available on eBay. And there's a couple of different versions of those. The option that I chose to go with was to order some from Dave's Vega Village. You can either do that on eBay or you can call him. Dave is a guy up in Canada that has spent money building the tooling needed to press these washers out. And they're exact duplicates of the stock 
factory ones. I used a combination of old hardware I had laying around to press these ferrule washers into the bushing sleeves. Now be careful when you're putting these in to make sure that the ferrule washer is actually sliding into the bushing sleeve properly and not just mashing up against the outside of it. For that reason I recommend against using power tools for this and sticking with hand tools. The third issue that you're you're likely to run into just as well as I am is that whenever you install the lower control arms in their slots and tighten them down it tends to squeeze the metal in especially over time so now what we're gonna have to do is come up with some hardware and I'll dig through my hardware bin to find a bolt and some washers and a couple of nuts to force those things back outwards so that we can easily fit in our lower control arms with the new polyurethane bushings and Dave's Vega Village ferrule washers Whatever the cheapest Amazon had, part number 5821. That's chill for right now, but you said you're gonna set it still? Yeah, I still oh, okay. set it So the Vega's up on the rack right now, and we're doing the alignment, and uh, the guy says that this car is about as straight as it could possibly be. Because <laughs> I did the the rear suspension, I did the rear, the, like, box the rear arms, I did all that stuff, so it, the up. fact that it shows that it's dead straight is... Dead straight in the rear end, bro. You cannot make the car more square than that. <laughs> I, I get brand new Nissans in your 2020 never been act are not square. Holy cow. This is square to the car. That makes me really happy. So this is, you know, 0.1 of, of a degree. Yeah. So that's like nothing. Like nothing. That's error in installation of these. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about that. All the work that I've done has been, uh, has been pretty right on. So we just got done with the alignment shop. The mechanic who was doing the alignment was just thoroughly impressed with how straight the car was and so was I you know it's it's not any credit to how how good I am it's a really a credit to how good the guys on the forums are that guide you through this kind of stuff my final thoughts are it didn't really have as much uh, camber as I would have liked I would have liked to have seen you know a, a degree or two of camber but honestly you know it's within stock spec so if you guys are just shooting for stock go ahead and do it exactly the way that I did it in the previous video um, as far as mounting the upper ball joint but if you're if you're trying to go for something a little more sporty only go an eighth of an inch inboard on the bottom and or just wallow out the hole dead center for the upper ball joint I did get about seven degrees of caster and that seven degrees of caster is about perfect for what I wanted overall I'm extremely happy with the, the way the car drives it handles 
like a modern car. Um, a little bit more steering input required, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm super happy with it. I really appreciate you guys watching, all the guys that have liked, subscribed, and you girls too, if there's you know any of you, but it's mostly Sausage Fest here. If you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with your friends. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.